Hey, Ryan, you're on the air. Hey, I, you tweeted something. If I could just reread it and then maybe get your take on it. You said, the reality is life is a single-player game. You're born alone. You're going to die alone. All of your interpretations are alone. All your memories are alone. You're gone in three generations and nobody cares. Before you showed up, nobody cared. It's all single player. I mean, I think about this quite a bit myself. I spend quite a bit of time alone. And sometimes it has me thinking, what's the point? So I was just wanted your, your take on that. Thanks. Yeah, it's a good question. Okay, so life is a single player game. Obviously, it's not 100% true. Life is also a multiplayer game. But I think it's more interesting to consider it as a single player game because that's not a thought that gets brought up as often. Society always trains us for society's ends. and Society is a multi-user organism, so it will train us for the multi-user game. So only the individual can themselves stumble upon the single player game and that frame of mind and see where it takes them. So why is this an interesting frame of mind? Firstly, there's a lot of truth to it. So much of the world, so much of is your interpretation of the world, so much of mindset is your mindset. To a tree or a rock or a house or even another person, reality is very different. To an object, reality is neutral. To another subject, reality is subjective from their point of view. So a lot of this is up to you how you want to interpret it. Another point here is that the only moment that really exists is now, even tomorrow or yesterday are just thoughts in the current moment. So nothing exists outside of right now. You're not necessarily going to be around for any appreciable period of time. Everything you do will be forgotten, like everything in the past has been forgotten. It's not to say it's meaningless, but it's more to say that you create your own meaning, you interpret your own meaning, you, you are the meaning of your own life. And that gives a freedom. Now, you can, you're free to interpret this however you want. Inside every person is either a budding god or a budding demon or an angel or a saint. It's entirely up to you how you choose to interpret it. I just recommend that you interpret it in a way that is as close to reality as possible, because then you're likely to make less mistakes. And if you have the choice, if you must choose, then interpret it positively, because it's just better to live a positive experience than a negative one. People who commit suicide, for example, God bless them, but they left the game too early. They were going to leave the game anyway. Everybody leaves the game eventually. So you may as well just stick it around and see what it has planned for you. Why do anything? What, is this a problem? Is this a problem that there's a lack of meaning? No, it's a form of freedom. If there was a meaning to life, then we would all be stuck trying to figure out that meaning. And the moment that a person and found that meaning and shared it with everybody else, then we would all be enslaved to that particular meaning. So I think it's liberating that there's no meaning to life. You can create your own meaning. And certain meanings that you create or interpret are far more pleasant than others. Some of them can lead you directly to a life of contemplative bliss. Some of them can lead you straight to creativity. Some of them can lead you to helping other people. I would argue that the meanings that are the best to create and work on are the ones that self-actualize you against your natural talents. The thing that you enjoy doing that puts you in flow, that has some worthwhile benefit either to yourself or to society, and doesn't cause extreme negative repercussions for you in this life. And just be aware that a lot of the things that look like they're good for you are actually just good for you in the short term, and they do cause negative repercussions in the long term. So to me, the a part of the secret of living a good and happy life is just understanding the long-term consequences of your actions. And so if you create a meaning, that long-term will lead you to compound interest in good relationships and in creating wealth for yourself and not having a very busy mind and just being able to go through life sort of happy from moment to moment moment, that's going to be a better life that you've created for yourself. But yeah, if you want to create a, a harsher and darker or shorter life for yourself, you should feel free to make that choice. I just don't think it's a very wise choice. The single player game frame also robs you of this idea of outside agency. It takes away this idea that you are a victim, that things happen to you, that you don't have agency in your life. I think that the belief that people fall into where they're victims, there are real victims in real circumstances, but they're far rarer than Twitter would have you believe. On Twitter, there's many budding victims who are raising their hand, crying for victimhood. And all you're doing is you're robbing yourself of your agency. You're robbing yourself of your ability to make a difference in your own life. So even if you have been a real victim, let's just go ahead and accommodate that for a moment, I would say it's still a better frame to basically say, no, life is a single player game. I choose to rise out of that. I choose to reinterpret that. And long term, 
when you look back on your life, the moments you can be proudest of is when you rose past circumstances that were difficult, when you rose past your suffering, and then you accomplished something. That's where character is built. That's where resumes are made. That's where people have their proudest moments. So if you had no adversity, it would be a really boring game. Imagine a, a game of, I don't know, Mario Brothers, where there was no jumping and no prizes and nothing to do and no monsters. It would be incredibly dull and incredibly boring. Also, a game that went on forever would get really dull. So I would say play the game. It's your game. You get to design the board. You get to design the challenge. You get to design the victory condition. And that's a lot of the creativity. One of my other related tweets is the only true test of intelligence is if you get what you want out of life. And this one triggered a lot of people, which I love the tweets that actually trigger a lot of people, but they're undeniably true, which is intelligence is like this abstract concept that we talk about. But the, the real measure is, did, did you get what you want out of life? And there's a two parts in there. It's not just one part. One part, of course, is were you able to hack reality to get what you wanted? But the more important part is, were you smart enough to figure out what to want in the first place? And that means there are many booby prizes that simply aren't worth having. And then there are others that are out of your reach. It's ludicrous for me to desire wings or even to travel into a rocket in a, into outer space because it's either low ROI effort or it's unachievable for me. So what I want to do is to figure out what it is that is worth wanting. And remember, not wanting something is as good as having it. So if you can not want in the first place, that's even better. But the test of intelligence here is getting what you want out of life, but also knowing what to want. So when life is a single player game, you get to craft it. It's a blank canvas. It's not a negative thing. It's a positive thing. It gives you a level of freedom you would not have. Multiplayer games are inherently less free. Single player games are more free. I encourage a single player frame simply because society will not encourage it you won't encounter it outside of the individual and also because it gives you back your agency and it has the benefit of being largely true